Morning guys. Well, today is, uh, let me see here, what day is it? September 5th already. And uh, I'm still working on getting my slideshow together from the, uh, the Rolog show so you guys can see all the photos I took. I think it was like 165 photos. So I'm working on getting that together and posting that up. But uh, today I got to do two things. First, I got to thank Ben, uh, 1928 Farmall Ben, check out his channel. He's a younger guy that's been um, tearing apart and redoing a Farmall regular. And he recently got it running, I believe. I've seen a couple short videos on Facebook, but haven't seen anything on his channel yet. I know he's been having some camera issues, I think, so bear with him on that. But uh, I got to thank him because I loaned him my sleeve puller for his regular and he recently sent it back to me and he also sent me a couple of gifts um, he sent me a nice manual for the uh, it's an overhaul manual for farm all regulars and then he sent me a magneto service manual for uh, it's gonna be probably like the F4, F6 E4A, H4, H1 a lot of different mags so EK series Wycos, AP, um, some Dixie and Arrow Splitdorf mags so he sent me some really cool and useful manuals for this for this tool loan I did for him and I was I was not expecting this at all so also got a very nice very nice letter from him so I appreciate that a lot, Ben, and I guess this means now i got to start looking for a farm all regular. But <laughs> i got a couple other things uh, on my list before I get something like that, and uh, we've got a couple irons in the fire with some other stuff right now. So, uh, so thanks a lot, Ben, and uh, today, I'm not sure if this is going to be all in one video or part one and part two, but I'm going to... Remove the belly pump from the M finally. I still got the loader off of it and uh, we'll put uh, put some work into it as far as putting new seals in. I'm still waiting on a couple to come in the mail, but I got a couple already. So I did order a, a uh, hydraulic lift all blue ribbon service training course serviceman's guide. So this pretty much has, you know, everything I need to know about these belly pump systems and how to how to remove uh, the pump and tear it apart and put it back together. I don't know if I'll go that far into it. Um, it seems to be working well. It's just leaking. So I'm going to start with putting new seals in it and go from there and possibly do the transmission input shaft seal and then the, the belly pump drive that comes out of the transmission, the output shaft. I'll try and do the seal on that as well because I ordered those. I should have done those when I had the tractor split in half and the motor out of it because it would have been a lot easier. Plus there was no fluid in it. I'm hoping I don't have to drain the fluid out of it to do those seals. But either way, i got to drain the fluid out of the belly pump. So let's, uh, let's go back at the M and... Um, get it in the garage here. I think my, my wife's going to be surprised when she gets home because uh, I don't think the M will be leaving the garage for a couple days. So, oh well, that's the way it is. So, let's go get that thing in here and we'll get to work. Okay. Oh dang, I left the fuel on. I never leave the fuel on.
muffler off before I can get it in the garage. So let me do that and we'll get to work. Figured I had to give you guys a little bit of a sound clip without a muffler, so there you go. But let me uh, let me get everything situated here, and we'll get going. Okay, guys. First thing we got to do in order to remove the belly pump is we have to drain the fluid, and your drain plug is right here. It's a square-headed plug, and then we have to remove the dust cover shield. It's just one bolt on each side. It's this little tin shield. Remove that. Remove our hydraulic control lever. It's just one bolt here. Then we have to remove the cap, the filler cap, and each line on the sides. So we have to remove the entire line and elbow coming out there, coming out this side. And then we have to remove each of these two. After that, it's just these four bolts, one, two, whoops, sorry, the light is blinding you, so we'll go to this side. So, there's two bolts here, and there's two on the opposite side, but you want to have a, a floor jack or some type of support underneath this pump before you take these bolts out. Now be careful, because this pump is very heavy, it's at least 100 pounds, I would say. So it's all cast iron, the reservoir is cast iron, so put a, a floor jack with a couple blocks of wood underneath here and then slowly lower the pump down because you'll probably have to steady it with your hands. There are some other methods I've seen. Some guys use threaded rod in all four holes and then thread the nuts, thread some nuts down on the rod so it all lowers at the same rate, but that seems kind of tedious because you have to do you know four nuts all at equal rates and it just the floor jack seems a little bit easier and faster it may be a little more awkward but it just seems to work better for me so let's go ahead and drain the oil we'll remove the dust shield take the lever off and then we'll remove our hydraulic lines and go from there all right all right, as you guys can see, I've got um, the hydraulic control lever removed. I've got this pipe fitting removed for the hydraulics. Just got to take the cap out here. Set that on the bench. This is that dust shield I was talking about. Just goes right behind the pump. And then I've got these two pipe fittings removed. Now, you will have to drop down your clutch, clutch lever shaft to, uh, to get these two pipe fittings out. It's just easier to get a pipe wrench on it and turn it. Um, I found that it's easier to take the, there's felt seals in here as well. As you can see, they're pretty well shot. It's just a dust seal. It's not to keep, you know, fluid in. It's just a, a dust seal to keep dirt out. So, anyways, I found it's easier to take this front port out first and then remove the back port. So, that's just what I found. And now I want to show you, before we start dropping the pump, there's a, a spacer in here or a connector that's got a machined, it's a machined bevel on one end that's this way, and on the other side it's this way. So what I would do is I would make sure that the rear section has the machined 
peg vertical. That way when you drop the pump, this drive dog comes out with it. I don't know if you guys can see, but I'm moving it. And the easiest way to get that vertical is just put a block of wood in your clutch pedal, keep the clutch forward or engaged, and then you can turn that either, I just used a small screwdriver and kind of pushed it, or you can try and do it by hand, but it's really tight to get your hand in there. So just use a small screwdriver and turn it by hand until that drive dog is vertical on the rear. So let's get a jack set up underneath the pump, take the bolts out, and we'll start lowering it down. All right, so we're gonna slowly lower this down and I'm gonna try and steady it with my hand. So I got all four bolts out. You can see it's starting to separate there. So here's that drive dog. And it kind of slides into place. You can pull it straight out, but it slides in. Looks just like that. So one side's vertical, one side's horizontal. And the H is very similar to this, only it's a lot longer piece because the distance between here is a lot farther. So. don't want is, you know, I can lift it and steady it by hand, so, oh, I just don't want to tip it off, so, Let's see where we're at on the jack here. Remember, just be careful because this thing is heavy. So, there we go. Our pump assembly's out. So, let's get this rolled out of the way and we can start taking the pump itself out. Alright, guys, now to remove the pump. There's a series of bolts all the way around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think. Ten bolts to remove the pump. And uh, it just basically pulls out of the back side. So let's go ahead and take those out. I think that's all we have to do. We'll find out. Long size. Some of them are larger than others. So these top four are five eighths, and the bottom are nine sixteenths. So we'll go ahead and kind of keep these in order. Just make sure that they're all the same length. And they are. So the top four, whoop, 
See? Now we do have some that are different lengths. So. The two center ones are are longer. So these two center ones are the longer ones. I have to get a I don't have any uh, unfortunately I don't have any brass drifts or punches so I'm going to be careful with my my steel ones. But I just basically just want to break it loose. doesn't want to come loose. As far as I know it should just come should just pop out. here pump and this is threaded so this is the seal we want to replace behind here. This drive is threaded onto that shaft. So I just have to figure out how I'm going to get this out. Let me uh, let me turn the camera off and we'll get back with you in a second. All right, guys. So here's the inside of the lift all. Uh, this is just the reservoir. That's all it is. It holds about six quarts and. Uh, this is actually the pump itself. Now, the seal that we want to replace, let me set this camera down here. The seal we want to replace is around that drive dog. So, get a close up here. So the seal that goes around that drive dog is what we want to replace. Now that, that drive dog is threaded onto this shaft. And in order to prevent that shaft from turning, what the manual says to do is to insert a piece of metal into here and you can see the drive gears for the pump and you're basically mashing a piece of metal between those gears to allow this shaft to stop from turning and then you're just gonna hit this around to loosen it with a punch. So I don't have a brass punch. I'll do the best I can with uh, a steel punch, but first I'm going to get this thing mounted up in the vise. That way it's, uh, it's ready to go. So let's do that and go from there. Well, that broke loose pretty easy. So Essentially, I just took this piece of metal and slid it down. This is essentially the intake or the pickup for the pump down in here. So I slid it down in there, made sure it was locked between the, the two gears, and then I just hit this around. And there we go. So our seal is right here. But... Uh, we just got to get it out now, so that's our drive dog there. So the the ceiling surface is actually right around this drive dog. So, and I can tell you, 
it's been, if you can see, I'm going to have to clean this up with a file because there's some definite, uh, some chew marks going on here. So I'm going to have to clean that up with a file as best I can. Otherwise that will tear up my new seal. So, alright, well, that's kind of uh, phase one. Now, let me get these gloves off. There is a seal. There is a seal behind the actuating lever in this pump or in this reservoir. So, what I have to do, if you guys can see in there, there's a nut there on that lever or a, a bolt that goes through that lever. That's the the actuating lever for the the raise and and lower and hold positions for the pump. So I got to remove that bolt and then slide slide this shaft out of of that lever and I should be able to get to the seal that's behind there. So that I will also do. And those are the only two seals for this pump as far as external external leaking goes. Um Everything else looks really good inside here, so I'm not. I'm probably not going to mess with it. I'll uh, I'll have to make a new gasket, but the easiest way to do that is just to lay over my gasket material and tamp it out with a hammer. And I've got some some gasket uh, some cutting tools coming, so I can cut all the bolt holes I need for this. But Let's uh, work on getting this seal out and go from there. All right, guys, this is the hydraulic control arm rod that goes into the side of the reservoir. So it goes through here, and there's a seal around that to keep the, the reservoir tank from leaking through that. And the Case International site calls for this seal right here. It's an SKF 7512, which is this seal 7512 and unfortunately this is the seal that I need so as you can see they're nowhere near the same if I put one on top of the other they are not even close to the same size the shaft size is correct you know the the inner diameter but the actual outside diameter is much larger on the replacement seal so I don't know, I may have to reuse this seal. I don't even know if they're still available. But I'll have to do some checking. It's not in the best shape. There's there's kind of a puncture here on the, the outside diameter. But we'll see. But uh, I did get this off. I cleaned out the... Uh, I didn't get it off in the best shape, but I got it out. But I cleaned out this... Uh, recession where the seal is installed into and then I also cleaned up the drive dog so I got rid of any sharp corners or sharp edges on it to prevent uh, any marring up of the new seal but I'm still waiting on the new seal for this um, this seal here 20702 is the new seal for I want to say What did I do with my flashlight? I know I got it somewhere. Oh, here it is. So, it's the new seal for either one of these two shafts. So, I'm going to have to get down on the ground here. So, the top shaft is your transmission input shaft and that seal I can already see is leaking for sure and this bottom shaft also has a seal this is your belly pump drive shaft so I'm gonna try and replace both um, the only downfall is I may have to drain some of the fluid in the transmission because this is obviously below transmission level. The top one I should be able to do without having any issues, but 
the bottom one is definitely going to have to either be drained or the tractor will have to be tilted back quite a ways which I'm considering doing so we'll see but it's going to be an adventure to get this top one out because I know that I have to pull the the clutch assembly which means I also have to pull the throw out bearing and and all that stuff so and the cross shaft and but we'll work on it we'll get it so right now I'm kind of at a stopping point because I don't have all the seals I need so I'll probably just work on cleaning up the reservoir I might pressure wash it and get that all cleaned out and let it uh, let it air dry but for now that's really all I can do make a gasket but I'm still waiting on my my gasket cutting tools and I'm really still getting driven nuts by this poison ivy but for now that's our stopping point so stay tuned alright guys we've got the new seal installed and uh, we've got the the drive cog or the I guess that's what I'll call it the drive cog we've got that tightened back up so the pump is ready to get put back in to the reservoir and I've got all the gasket areas cleaned up so you guys can see all that got all that cleaned up I pressure washed the, the reservoir inside and out and then I dried the inside so that there wasn't any water in there cleaned off the gasket surface so now I just have to make a gasket for this and uh, reinstall the pump now the only issue that I'm struggling with is whether or not to reuse that that seal that goes on this side so it I might just try to uh, set the camera down I might just try to put some RTV on the, on the outside of it because the inside's still good it's still pliable you know the gasket's still pliable it's not cracked or anything so I might just try to put some some RTV in here just to help seal it up but uh, I'm not really sure yet because I haven't I looked online and that's you know double check the number and that's the number that they list for this seal and it's obviously not the correct one so just to kind of show you it's not going to fit in that recession it's much too big so I don't know that's probably what I'll do I'll probably just put some some RTV around the outside of this seal and then reinstall it so we'll go from there alright guys well we ended up going over to Domino's to uh, to make a tool let me set the camera down here quick actually I'll just turn around and show you we made a tool we took some 7 16 key stock and welded it to a nut a large nut that way we could use it to um, essentially it would be in well this flashlight isn't really helping out but so it would be inserted in here and then we could just hit it with an impact and that worked so let me just thread this out. Might be easier to show you on the workbench. So, if this is our slot and this is our tool, it just goes inside that slot like this. Make sense? Then you can loosen it or tighten it with the impact on that nut. So, big thanks to Domino for helping me out with that. I don't have a welder as you guys know so 
that was uh, much appreciated. But one of the things that concerns me about this drive dog is there's some grooves wore into it. So I'm hoping that with the new seals it won't leak. But we'll find out I guess. Really the only way to to fix these grooves would be would be to um, either get a new drive dog or have this welded and then turned down to the proper size again. But they're not too bad. So hopefully hopefully a new seal, actually it'll be a pair of seals will will help that. So now all we have to do I keep going up and down and up and down. All we have to do is remove those three cap screws. So there's <laughs> this flashlight. There's three cap screws, one here, one up top, and one to the left. So we remove those cap screws in that whole um, seal carrier assembly comes off. So let's do that and uh, hopefully we don't get rained on with fluid. I've got the tractor kind of up in the air here. So let me do that and I'll turn the camera back on because obviously I can't hold this flashlight and uh, videotape and use a tool at the same time. All right, so we've got that seal cap off. You can see the bearing on the end of the shaft there. Everything looks good. It's not rusty or anything. There's not a whole lot of play up and down, so that's good. Now the troublesome one is going to be the top shaft because I can see that that's leaking but all this stuff has to come out in order for me to um, in order for me to replace that seal and I've got a new one I just uh, have to get all this stuff out first so um, I'm gonna do some research before I start tackling this I'm not exactly sure what has to come out first I know the throw out bearing and the clutch cross shaft and everything that has to come out so we'll uh, we'll take a break here, do some research, and come back to this. But I'll show you what this uh, seal that came out of this thing looks like because I already drove it out. It's a double thick, double thick seal, and you can see that it's it's wore through. You can see the spring showing through there. So this. This seal is probably original, but this is the carrier that it rides in. And the new seals go right into this carrier, and there's going to be two of them. So they're going to be a thin seal similar to what you would see here, just a single lip seal, but there'll be two of them stacked on top of each other inside that, inside that carrier. So this is for the top shaft, the transmission input shaft. So I've already got that one. We're just waiting on the other ones to come. So until those get here, we'll, uh, we'll take a break and do some research on getting that top shaft out. So stay tuned. All right, guys. Well, we're going to start taking this clutch assembly out. The entire clutch has to come out in order for me to get this shaft out. And it all comes out as kind of a unit. So I know we got to take that that uh, cross shaft assembly out, the throw out bearing uh, cross shaft. So there's two bolts for that, and then there's heavy washers up above those bolts that are going into go into that keyed keyed shaft that keeps that yoke. I'm trying to hold this flashlight so it shows you but 
there's a nut here or a bolt here and up above it you can see the keyed or the, the heavy washer and same thing on the other side this isn't really working very well with the flashlight but so we're going to take those out take that cross shaft out and then we'll probably remove the spring and the carrier yoke loosen that we'll loosen all of our drive shaft bolts and then from there we have to take three of the clutch cap screws the pressure plate cap screws off and they get threaded into these holes here if you can see them there's three holes and that'll compress the clutch springs so that you can remove the clutch and clutch disc assembly as a unit so hopefully this all works as planned but we'll find out so. All right, guys. Well, for those of you that think uh, you can't get the clutch out of the belly of an M, you can. Uh, there's a couple videos on YouTube that show how to reinstall it. But I'm going to kind of walk you through what I had to do to remove it. So, as I was saying before we started, the first thing you got to do is you got to get the throw-out bearing or the clutch fork out. So, in order to do that, let me grab the shaft here. This shaft, I'll kind of do it here on the floor. This shaft goes through the clutch fork assembly, and as you can see, there's some keyways in this shaft that hold these heavy washers. Okay, so those heavy washers go inside this clutch fork. And then the bolts go through those. So you take the two bolts out. Then you can slide this throwout shaft out enough to where you can get to this washer. And then you pull that washer out, slide the shaft out more, pull the next washer out. And then you can slide the shaft out and the clutch fork will fall down. And that's pretty much how that is removed. Don't forget to disconnect your your uh, clutch pedal return spring that's hooked to your clutch fork. Uh, from there, see I'm trying to remember, from there what you have to do is remove three of the six bolts for your pressure plate. So the bolts that attach it to the flywheel. Now I always remove you know three bolts opposite themselves so you remove those three and then there are three holes in the pressure plate that you thread those bolts into there's one here there's one over here and there's one here that uh, allow you to compress the springs in the pressure plate so that it makes it a lot easier to get everything out it also helps align the clutch when you put it back together so that you're not trying to compress the springs as you're inserting the drive shaft into the end of the pilot bearing on the flywheel. So tighten all these down. Um, you don't have to go overly tight, but good and snug, you know. You'll see the clutch fingers, you know, moving down or inwards towards the the clutch disc. From there we'll remove the two bolts that hold the throwout bearing yoke to the top of the transmission casing or the, the clutch housing. So let me grab my flashlight. So right up in here you can see there's a couple of bosses. That's where your, your clutch yoke attaches or your throwout bearing yoke attaches. So you'll remove that and let that turn down. Actually, I kept it flipped up so it was out of the way. And then it's just a matter of removing the um, four nuts that attach this um, connecting plate to your um, drive shaft and your input shaft yoke. And then you'll have to probably hit the, hit the ends of them with a dead blow hammer. 
because they're a, a tapered bolt that once you get them moving they'll come right out so and last you have to remove the bolt that goes into the end of the the input shaft here and then that'll give you enough clearance to get the drive shaft back and down to drop everything out but everything comes down as a unit as far as the uh, um, the clutch drive shaft and throw out bearing goes it all comes out as a unit and it'll all go back in as a unit so that's essentially all you have to do now the tough part is going to be getting this yoke off this shaft and there's a key underneath here so when we get this off we have to get the the half moon woodruff key out in order to get the the seal carrier off the end of the input shaft so let's work on that and uh go from there all right guys we've got uh the uh input shaft seal carrier out um, as i said before the coupler for the transmission to drive shaft that goes on the end of that uh, transmission input shaft is keyed there's a large woodruff key in there so make sure that when you get that off you remove that woodruff key before you try to pull the seal carrier off so or the seal retainer otherwise it won't come off so we got the old seal out put the new new seal in and uh, I did make new gaskets there are gaskets for each one of these and they do have make sure you pay close attention because they do have a little notch for oil to get to the back side of this and into that bearing that rides in there so I've made one for that I've made one for the belly pump drive shaft seal carrier it also has an oil slot so make sure that you make that notch for that oil slot and uh, yeah um, the only thing I'm waiting on is the uh, the seal for the uh, belly pump um, drive shaft so that's all there ready to go I did polish up the drive couplers and try to take as much of the grooves out of them as I could so this is the the belly pump drive coupler so that'll go with this and this seal and this is your transmission input shaft drive shaft coupler I polished that up I just, just took some emery cloth um, this is 120 grit emery cloth mounted it in my vise and just went back and forth you know this way so polished them up as best I could without wearing into the metal so that way it rides in that seal without getting that seal tore up but um, that's really all I can do I'm gonna put this back in get that all sealed up and then probably work on getting the clutch and everything back in but I can't put the belly pump back in until I get that seal and I think it's supposed to come tomorrow and I will be in South Dakota for the 150 unveil so I may not get this thing put back together until Sunday because I have a funeral on Saturday so um, my co-worker John that had cancer um, ended up passing away last week unfortunately but cancer sucks it is what it is not much we can do now so not much we could have done then either so but we appreciate everybody's prayers and thoughts for him so anyhow let's get this uh, transmission input shaft coupler back in place and then see if we can't get the clutch back in all right guys well as you can see we got the clutch back in our seal retainers in our coupling is in and our clutch uh, throw out shaft is in springs in place so again kind of order of assembly here first thing you want to do is put your seal retainer on and then you slide your your drive coupler on don't forget to put that um, woodruff key in there there's a woodruff key in there then before you put the bolt that goes into the end of that shaft 
on that drive coupler before you put that in you put the whole clutch assembly throw out bearing and drive shaft in and put it in place and then get your your pressure plate tightened down to the flywheel so that's done and you don't have to mess with that and then after I did that I put the throw out bearing carrier and yoke back in place so that I wasn't fighting that while trying to get the bolts into the, the drive shaft coupler and then I installed that um, I guess you could call it a spacer or adapter in here and put all my bolts and nuts back on and tightened all that down and the last thing I did was slid the um, throw out shaft in with those I don't know if you guys can see it probably not due to the shadows but up in there there's a nut or a bolt there and there's the same thing on the other side and then you can see that heavy washer in there so it slides into that yoke so and it slides into that yoke and into a keyway in that shaft there's one on each side so that's where we're sitting there and I think the uh, the seal just got dropped off for the the out output shaft that goes into the the belly pump so we'll uh, open that box up and we might even get this thing back together today so let's take a look and see what we got all right guys well it was the seals that came so again this output shaft seal is different now it's an updated seal it's it's a thinner seal so you got to install two of them make sure you order two and you just drive the first one in far enough to where you can get the second one started and then you drive the second one in so it's flush with the the front of the carrier here or the seal retainer so that one's in everything's buttoned up and ready to go as far as uh, up top so now it's just a matter of uh, putting the pump back in now I'm going to have to realign this notch so that it's vertical so that when I put the pump back in that coupler drive that drive coupler um, slides right up into this so um, let's uh, let's get this thing back level I have this tilted right now so I don't have to drain any fluid it's not exactly the safest way but I'm trying to be as safe as possible but I've got the front wheels up on car ramps and then those are on blocks so the tractors probably up in the air about 15 16 inches in the front so that all the fluid drains towards the back of the tranny housing that way it doesn't leak out the front where those seal retainers are that I removed so let's get it back on the ground and uh, we'll work on getting the pump back in okay guys I just want to show you a little trick that I'm going to use to keep that drive drive cog in place I took some electrical tape and just went around it that way it doesn't fall off when I'm trying to raise it into position so again make sure that the transmission side is vertical and then when you are underneath let's line this up so that it's vertical as well I'm gonna have to uh, get something to turn that but I'll line this up so it's vertical and then we'll just raise the pump into place and we should be good to go to tighten it down and start putting all the fittings back in so let's uh let's get it done all right guys we've got it all back together and uh i've got fluid in it i've checked the uh make it, uh, the raise and lower hydraulic control lever to make sure you can hear that that relief valve snap so when i pull it back You can hear it snap forward, so that way we know it's locked in and working. So let's go ahead and fire it up and uh, 
see what happens. I'm hoping everything's working right. <laughs> it's not very often I get everything right the first try, but fuel's on. Pump's not making any noise, which is good. And you hear the hoses pressure up. You see them release. You can watch the hoses stiffen up. And you hear the RPMs drop when it loads up. So, that's good. Everything's working. Now hopefully we don't have any leaks. I'm going to go ahead and put the muffler on and take it for a quick drive.
Alright guys, well, I think that's going to do it for this video. Now we just got to get the loader back on it and we'll be ready to go for the winter. So, thanks for watching, thanks for wrenching with me, and I hope you guys learned as much as I did in this video. And Oh man, another project done. Take care.